implications on the victims. The law is clear. For each and every offense, they should be redressed for a penalty. Hence, our passionate appeal to members of the public to report. And this is why today was saying it's unique. You can see Mkawana Matzamai, Imini Na, Commissioner said you tell me, we are really, we mean it. We want the people to report. We are mothers. We have children. And we feel for the victims. We are saying, please come out and report. Reports in some sections of the media that those who have reported are being bullied and labeled are not correct. As I have already highlighted that only one case of alleged sexual abuse was reported at St. Mary's in Tichungis. And she's here to testify together with Superintendent um, uh, Mchema. Investigations are already in progress. It is not in the culture of the Zimbabwe Republic Police to sweep cases under the carpet, especially where children and women are concerned. And I'm sure they are here, they will also testify. In fact, when members of the public fail to report, we always appeal for information. And when it is not forthcoming, we are unable to act. In this regard, the reports of abuse and rape can be reported at any police station or directly to National Complaints Desk, which is open 24-7 on the following telephone numbers, 0242-703-631. We also have a WhatsApp number, 0712-800-197. As security services, we are guided by our constitutional mandates during the execution of any given task. At no time do we condone any unlawful conduct by the security forces, which are obviously outside our mandate and responsibility. To this end, any member who violates the law will only have themselves to blame, as the law will be applied without reservation. No one is above the law, no one at all. We are also appealing to other stakeholders who might have information pertinent to our appeal to also come forward and assist. That assistance could be through encouraging those affected to report their cases or actually drawing attention to cases that might have been brought to them. Remember, we can only rid ourselves of all forms of unethical behavior in our society if we collectively take the necessary action to expose, condemn, and make those responsible accountable. If we don't do that, and we, if we continue giving shelter to abused women, we are not doing any favor at all, because the law has to take its course. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for taking the time to attend this press conference, which I hope has clearly spelled out our position as security forces. We remain committed to serving the nation, ably guided by our constitutional mandate. I want to thank you and I want to hand over to Commissioner Sergio. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Secretary. 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 Thank you, Honorable Sec
the unit is manned by police officers who are specifically trained to handle uh, GBP cases. Uh, since the demonstrations started, we have only received one case that occurred in, in St. Mary's on the 16th of January. And to, to, one, to us, that one case is too many. My office has been in touch with all our provincial coordinators, that is the two three provincial coordinators, countrywide, and in some and some of our strategic partners, uh, trying to find out whether they have received any related GBP cases which have not been brought to our attention. They are only they, they told us that they are only reading about uh, these cases on social media platforms. However, we would like to appeal to all members of the public, uh, civic society organizations, NGOs, to come forward and give us information on, on GBP, GBP cases that might have been perpetrated during the, the riotous situation that we experienced. The information, like Madam Sharama has said, would be held in strict confidence and for us to effectively deal with these cases, we need to have complainants. So we want uh, people to urge uh, victims to, to come forward. We, we are aware that uh, some victims might be reluctant to report to the police for various reasons. And we would like to, to, uh, to assure them that we also handle such cases professionally and in confidence. However, if they are still reluctant to come forward, we urge them to visit the adult death clinic. And we do have Sister Mashinda is here with us, a family support clinic, Arabe Hospital, a MSF clinic in Bari, Expedis Offerman or any other medical facility for review services for related uh, issues. So we, we are really waiting for, for people to come forward. Uh, we know people might be afraid that uh, uh, of reprisals, like Madam Sharama said, but uh, we have uh, handled similar cases and we assure you that we do it professionally. Thank you. Can I give this opportunity to Ms. Nisan to say something? Um, I'm Letty Nisan, from Safra Project, um, an organization that deals Sorry. with... Um, Sorry? Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. i uh, my name is Nitin Sanu. I'm the director from Sasa Project, an organization that deals with um, gender-based violence against women and girls. We are equally concerned um, with the reports of sexual violence as well as physical violence um, that happened during the shutdown. And we are appealing to women, girls, um, uh, families to report. And for if the Women are afraid to go to the police directly. We work very closely with the victim-friendly uh, police. Um, they can come through Musasa. They can also call through our toll-free number, which is 0808-0074. They can also visit our different offices in Arare, in Plawayo, in Gweru, in Mashrinko. We also have shelters that we can accommodate. So if um, women and children uh, um, in particular, girls are feeling um, uncomfortable going directly to the police. We are available to facilitate their report to the police. But I think what is important is for us to 
to send a message of never again. This should never be allowed to happen. We already have a, a lot of cases of gender-based violence in this country. And if we allow in situations of chaos for women to be violated and it goes unnoticed and it goes unreported, we are creating a, a, a society that is characterized of chaos. And we really appeal to members of the public we throw even our toll free and we can uh, uh, facilitate even their travel to ensure that they, they report. So Musasa uh, project is available and can facilitate that those cases are reported. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sister. I'm sure sister has something to say. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm Roma Shigarizu from the Adult Youth Clinic. And uh, we stand in solidarity with the Zetal Clinic Victim Friendly Unit, other stakeholders, and the entire victim friendly system. And our message is the same. Rape is a traumatic experience, as well as it is a medical emergency. The Adult Rape Clinic offers psychosocial support and all medical related services that have to do with the trauma of sexual assault whatever form. Ideally, we encourage all to report within 72 hours so that we can prevent HIV, assuming one is not already HIV positive. We can also prevent pregnancy within five days of the occurrence, and we can also prevent sexually transmitted infections. Um, in the same vein, the Adult Rape Clinic has a psychology department that deals with the more traumatized survivors and will offer long-term uh, psychotherapy to survivors of sexual assault. We trust and believe that people are out there. Yes, we have also heard um, and seen the media reports, and we are waiting for people to come forward. We are here to help you if you're out there and you can hear us. Our services are free of charge. Our services are highly confidential. And um, like Neti said, we work closely with the victim friendly system as a whole and will facilitate for you to get whatever aspect of um, services that you need outside of that which we offer. So please come forward. We are housed at Parlene Atwa Hospital in Arari Mazoe Street in the corridor of C9. We are also accessible via our Facebook page, Adult Rape Clinic. We are available via our website and on every social media platform in existence. We really want to appeal to you. We stand with you. We feel for you and we feel you because this is our area of expertise. Please come forward and get help. Remember also, while you are sitting at home and keeping quiet about this, you could have a pregnancy that you are not willing to have brewing inside of you. You could be harboring a sexually uh, transmitted infection that is um, that we are able to curb now before it's present. Uh, causes complications within your system. So please come forward. And if there's any other form of help that you need, please let us know and we will facilitate um, through our various um, stakeholders in the victim friendly system. We do reimburse for your transport costs. So kindly contact us. We are open from 8 o'clock to uh, 1615 every single day, Monday to Friday. When our doors are closed, you approach casualty department and we are on standby to offer you services from Parenia Truck Casualty Department um, after hours and over the weekends. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I think at this moment we can now for just a few questions uh, give this opportunity to Commissioner Craig Charanda. Commissioner Isabel Asidio, and also our partners to answer a few questions at the end. So I'll give this opportunity to Commissioner Charamba to maybe highlight some few issues. Okay, um, I have a few issues that I want to remind. We've also noted in the concern report that uh, children were um, detained. Uh, and this is what we did before we came to this press conference. Uh, we inquired with all our police stations 
and uh, this is what we got. Some children under the age of 18 were arrested for various allegations. In fact, some children were being used as human shields during the protests. The law requires that once children are arrested, the fact should be brought to the attention of the parents or guardians under which custody they will be released. So all the children who were arrested by the police were actually released into the hands of their guardian or their parents. Any interviews by the police will be conducted in the presence of their parents or guardians or their legal representatives. Probation officers from the Department of Social Welfare are also involved in all cases which involve minors. And this is the procedure that is actually followed. And it has been followed in most of the, in actually in all the cases because we actually um, inquired before we came here because we knew you we also going to uh, um, ask uh, this question. Um, then we also have um, an issue about um, Sky News video footage, which was uh, on, 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 on Sky News yesterday. And we have also gathered information that this incident occurred in July 2016. And the omnibus crew were identified, as I'm speaking right now, um, we traced through the, uh, the, the registration number of that, of that vehicle. And we've traced the identity of the owner of the omnibus. Uh, you can also go and interview him. I wish he was here so that he can also speak to you. And he confirmed that there was an incident, yes. And it was during a roundup of towns, which uh, has happened before this. However, we are not saying what happened in that video was correct. It wasn't, and investigations are actually in progress uh, to identify um, those two officers who are in uniform and the third one. So investigations, they've already started, and to show our seriousness, yesterday by the time that video was flighted, investigation started, and uh, the officers on the ground have since informed me that they've managed to trace the owner of that uh, commuter omnibus. And again, this was, was it the third person or second person? He actually sold, this combi was sold to about two people, and we had to go round and get the identity of that person. Um, so, basically, these are the two issues that I thought I should highlight, because I know you definitely asked, it was in some media sections. Yes. Um, now, if you could just give us an update of the arrest of the alleged perpetrator in the last couple of weeks. And also, we understand that there is a list of wanted people. That's the police are still recovering. Did you add to that the arrest of minors, the under 18s that you mentioned, how many were actually arrested as a minor and have been released? Without preempting the uh, investigations, what has happened with the case of the similar case that you made mention of one in St. Mary's, the state has there been any arrest in relation to that particular case? Um. Can I respond? Okay, um, the first one, uh, the update on our arrest, uh, actually, the, the actual figure, I do not have at the moment, but the arrests are over a thousand. And um, some of these accused persons were arrested for various offenses, which range from looting, um, public violence, um, some for arson, and some for destruction of property. So it depends what an individual was arrested for. In some cases, we, you remember, we actually planted um, an, an, an advert, which was, which was in the media, where we were appealing for information. And I want to say we've re received the tremendous information, and I want to thank members of the public, uh, because there are some people, we've actually seen people who had hidden, looted, um, looted goods in 
their backyards, in the gardens, and so on. So information has been coming in, and this information has actually assisted our criminal investigations department together with our duty uniform branch to follow up on some of the cases that were reported. But um, I also want to say, most of the people that are being arrested, they, one way or the other, they were linked to what happened um, previously. And this is why police are conducting investigations. And in any case, whenever a situation occurs, police always make follow-ups. And this is how we arrest um, individuals. And as police, we also work with the members of the public through our community policing initiatives, we always partner with the members of the public, with the media, so that we also get information on whatever we are looking for. And this is not unique to Zimbabwe, but police in general, in most countries, they also approach in that way. We, we, we exist in community and we work with communities. And this is the reason why today we are here, so that we also appeal to you through the media that anybody who has been abused has a right to come forward. And we are sincere when we are making this appeal. Then um, we also have um, how many were arrested. That is, you, you were talking of how many, okay, how many children were arrested. I'm sorry, okay, and I wouldn't be very sure, but I know in Breside they arrested almost uh, 14 children and um, 15 is that? With 14, then about 22, and some of them were throwing stones at vehicles, but they've since been released into the custody of their children. Some of them into the custody of their parents, and um, some of them were also involved in looting. And uh, there's no law here in Zimbabwe which says when a child commits an offense, we don't arrest them. Otherwise, you'll be growing a, a culture of criminality. They are arrested even for time immemorial, we do that, and they are released into the custody. And we have a partnership with the welfare department of welfare and, and the probation officers. They also look into such cases. And we work together to ensure that the rights of children are not overridden. So they are being uh, brought before the courts. But if you also want to find out what the courts are doing, I'm sure you can also do that and find out what they've done in the children that have been arrested. What was the other one? Progress. Ah, progress. Okay, the progress, um, in terms of the progress on the case that okay, which has been reported in Chichungwiza, um, again, that one you can come back to me when we can also check on the progress. Because when they are conducting their investigations at times, they don't want us to preempt uh, through the media. Because obviously when when the when the culprit hears that police are now following up, and definitely when you when when you as sexually assault someone at a particular place, and you know that the person is reported, you know for sure that police will come after you. And so we normally do not want to jeopardize investigations. But what you should know is that we are taking it seriously, and we already have leads, and we want to assure you that the culprits will be brought to book. Thank you very much for listening. Just a quick question. On the one rape um, charge he's being received, was that an allegation by security forces or somebody else? Yes, by security forces. Yes. Okay. We've made it very clear. That's why we are saying we, we want people to give us information. We want, we've seen pictures of women in social media, in newspapers, but they've not come to the police. But what happens, she has explained clearly. There are so many repercussions. They must come out and report. And we always provide protection. And this is why we say today, instead of me talking about this, we have an expert who deals with women and children. And we are all appealing together with our partners so that people come up and report. And whoever is providing shelter to them should also feel for them and say, if they don't report, then those culprits become heroes. So they must come and report to the police. Um, could you be categorical name that there was, a, after, in the aftermath of the protest, was there an official um, uh, program or, or, or 
official um, what can I say a, an official program of aid by the police that included the police and the army to go back and look at people who get looted, those that went uh, like door to door. An official operation by the police and the army. But then official operation, uh, dual operation between the police and the army going into uh, the suburbs to look for people who get looted. Okay. Uh, thank you. Official program, I don't know. Okay. Was there an official? Was there an official operation? A joint operation between the police and the army to go back into the suburbs and look for people or pick up people who would get looted after the police. After the protest, the police followed up on information. I think I've explained. You have explained. They that. actually followed up on information that we received. And yes, police will also investigate to establish what actually happened. But, and, but and when we get information, we make for us. Was it a joint operation? With that the I can, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure where you're coming from, but I'm saying, as police, I don't speak on behalf of the army. I speak for the police. This, as you can see, this is for, for, for us as police. If you want to ask them, I'm sure they are really willing to give you that answer. But what I'm saying is, as police, we make for us. And they have also made phone apps to find out there are allegations about women who have been abused. They've also done that. They are making phone apps. They are coordinating with um, with um, the rape clinic. And the rape clinic, you have them here. They are also appealing for people to come forward. So these are the phone apps that we do as police. So if you want to ask me things outside my mandate, I'm sure I, I won't be able to answer. Uh, no. I ask you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, is there any investigation into security officers or members of the police that are alleged to have tortured and beaten up people in this operation? This is what I'm saying again. If ever we receive complaints and the complainants come forward, we appeal to the complainants to come forward and also reports, then we can also investigate it. I, I think I said it again, there's no one above the law. And, 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 and for all those from the media who have been coming here before, I'm sure you've seen it. Even in the police, if you do anything wrong, you get investigated. It doesn't matter what you do. If it, 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 it is outside your mandate, you have to face the music on your own. So if there is anyone out there who has been assaulted, who has been abused by the police, by anybody, by a civilian, you come and report. But what I also want to say is, in the midst of all this, we've also arrested people who have been, um, who are still before the court and investigations are actually still ongoing. And we are going to release some of those names of those people. Recently, yesterday, there was a, a civilian who was caught in the act of having a military ID printed in his name. And a late civilian advised us and he was arrested. And we also have another similar case again, where a civilian was found in the military, military camp and he was arrested. And we are actually investigating how he got that uniform and what he has used that uniform to do. But what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what type, whatever offense has been committed. We all have a right to protection of the law, including ourselves and yourselves. So you, we all have the right to report. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sir Peter. Thank you for talking on why the media such as high indicators that people are afraid to actually report the abuses, the lashes that we see. That's why we, we, we are saying people should come and report. No one is coming to report. And we want people to come and report. Maybe I should cry so that people come to report. People are not coming to report. We want them to come and report. And once we've got complainants, then we can investigate. But if it is in the media, it's on social media. Yes, we can investigate to a certain extent. But we want the real complainants to come forward and report. Yes. So why did it take you so long, almost two weeks now, uh, to make such an appeal considering that some evidence is a piece of it? 
We have, all, we have already done it even through our minister. The minister has said it and we thought maybe it comes from us as police. It, it, it also make an impact, but the minister has already said it, but we didn't see anybody coming. The, min, the, the uh, government has also said it through the minister of information, but we've not seen anybody coming. So this is the reason why today we decided we want it to be heard from us. It has been said, but it has been said earlier on by the Minister of Home Affairs and others, but no one seems to be coming. So we are saying, please come forward and report. Do we have a uh, question? I think that one is best suited if you ask the Arab City Council, I'm sure they can respond to that question. Oh, I haven't seen them. I, I need to see them. <laughs> I need to see them. Yeah. Just want to understand something. Uh, the procedure with the ACOs. Do you investigate to arrest or you arrest to investigate uh, looking at what the law provides? We investigate, then we arrest. We investigate, then we arrest. If there are any leads, then we, we arrest. The, uh, if it is an accused person, then we arrest. But we investigate first, then we arrest. And this is why, again, I'll emphasize, we are saying we want complainants to come forward and report. Then we'll, we'll investigate. At the moment, we've already initiated the investigation. It's also part of the investigations process when they go to interact with their partners and that, that is part of the investigations. We want to find out is there anybody who went to report um, at, 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 um, at, at the various uh, stakeholders, did they report? And those are part of the investigation. So we investigate then when we have a prima facie case, then we arrest. Just to follow up then, upon the recent arrest that you have seen, you have seen, uh, you just stated that nearly thousands have been arrested. Mm -hmm. So it be that they, they were in investigation first before they were arrested. Mm -hmm. They were. They were. And, and the investigators, I'm a spokesperson, but we have investigators who actually do that. We investigate, and after investigation, they link you to, to the offender. They actually conduct the investigation, then they investigate. We actually have some very seasoned investigators. As is right said earlier on, they've actually arrested some armed robbers who have also taken advantage after this uh, social unrest. And we are going to provide you with the names. I'm sure once their investigations, um, they have taken the criminals to court, we will also provide you with the names of those people who are arrested because of investigations. My take is that I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. They say, sorry, let me let me explain. No, whoever, I don't agree with whoever is saying that. Why am I saying so? Um, I think I've seen uh, some ZANU-PF um, activists who also bent a suit for bus and they were arrested. In the same vein, those from the MDC who also um, participated one way or the other, they were also arrested. So I don't think it's fair to say police are targeting. As police, we only look at what somebody did during the civil unrest. Then we do conduct investigations and at the end of the day arrest them. I'm sure if it was targeting, I'm sure those ones would have been released. The ones who were involved in banning the suit for bus, they were not MDC. They were actually um, Zanpia. And it is not only MDC and Zanpia, there are also other civilians who are also involved, who have been arrested, who are neither Zanpia or MDC. But oh, what I want to assure you is that the law shall be applied without fear or favor. The Gomez case I'm actually hearing from you, I'll have to find out um, 
what actually happened. We are very patient maybe after this um, press conference we, we can find out um, what actually transpired then give you an update on that one. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Richmond. We will come again at the press conference. I will look at it.